singing. She scared me when she got to that singing part. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, who, not today, not today. Okay. She was just saying, I am singing. That's a blessing. You don't never know. Come on, we here I am, relationship class. God play, God be playing games. Shut up, Lachelle. You're gonna get a turn. God got jokes. That's just one, Lachelle. You need more than one turn. What is going on here? Amen. Um, yeah, I came Sunday night. They were like that. That's okay. I got enough to see. Uh, we on since we in relationship class and we got people here who are married. Uh, people here who are getting married. Anybody get engaged? Ain't told Bishop yet. Let me know first. I want to know. Let's are you? Okay, I just say. Erica. Fergie, you singing and dancing. Angelique, you praying. Okay, just checking. Because, uh, anybody else? Okay. I'm going to make sure. You don't never know. Shell? Why you don't do you want me saying it like that? You don't never know. In Jesus' name. It ain't to, this to be your time. Shoot. I don't expect that. Marriage is honorable. Now you know this Bible brand new. The page is sticking together. It ain't because I ain't even read it. It's because it's brand new. I finally broke down and said, okay, God, I, I got a Bible in every room in my house. I need a nice Bible I can bring to church. So because you have the type of pastor that will just send you a text message, May Lee, and tell you he's out of town. Like, I'm gone. And he told me on the day my phone died. Seriously, I got texts from people that is still there. My phone died, but I got, he made sure I got that text. It wasn't no, uh, can you teach? Can you cover? I'll be back. Just, I'm gone. So I'm like, what they got to do with me? What, what, you, tell, what you telling me for? So I'm assuming uh, he just knew that it was going to take care of. And so after I had my little pity party and I had to remind myself of the word that he taught on Sunday about not letting people ruin your day because that kind of was about to take my day <laughs> that kind of shook me for a little bit and I said no it's an honor God for the man of God to just be able to send a simple text and say I'm out of town I'll be back Friday and leave it at that and know that you're going to cover it Know that it's going to be taken care of. Know that people that are assigned here are going to show up. Amen. Know that everybody's going to be on post. And after 30 years, he should. So I have to, Tina, remind myself not to panic. God is trusting you. That's an honor. It don't always feel like that, Shalonda. It don't, it don't feel like, Shalonda in here, I thought, oh, there she is. It don't feel like, well, God, <laughs> this is an honor. Um, because if I ask you to come teach, Hey, okay. Uh, you you wouldn't feel honored to do that. There ain't nobody here gonna jump up and be like, "Sure, I'm honored to do that." If, if you are, raise your hand because I want to give you that honor. Okay. <laughs> I don't I want you to be honored. But I had to remind myself constantly, even after doing it for umpteen times, May it still throws me off guard. But the way he did it, I said, "Okay, God." Uh, the man of God's putting a lot of trust in me, even though I had my little moment this week. Sunday was my moment. He's saying it's still work to be done. Still work to be done, and I'm here. It's not about me. Once I'm, when God is done, I'm sitting down. Trust me. So relationship class, and I always struggle with teaching that because you guys know it's no secret that I've been divorced, and I'm like, why you got me teaching relationship class? There's a bunch of facets of people that are in here. There are single people, people that have been divorced, people that are married, but know this, marriage is honorable. Marriage is honorable. No matter what happens, uh, and, and you have to be talking about Esther, you have to make sure you make a vow before you make the vow. Because you say a lot of things, we're going to go over quickly. Somebody asked me to reteach, and I think I taught it maybe last year or something. Just briefly go over it, because I want you to understand, don't just come to this class, because it's Tuesday you come into this class to be prepared for marriage. Whether you coming in, going out, whatever happens, know that marriage is honorable. Your situation does not dilute the honor of marriage. 
because you didn't take it serious. So write that down. Your marriage is honorable. Everybody, we teach marriage here. Lachelle is going to be married. She is the missing piece. She is a wife. She, it, there's a man that is walking the earth homeless, lonely. It's not good. That's not a good thing, Shell. So every day you be like, you know what? I know he's single. I know he's alone. And that's not good, God. It's not good that that man is alone. Those who are married, I hope you understand. It's, a, it's ministry. It's a holy matrimony. It's instituted by God. Because why? Let's get Genesis real quick. Why is it so important to God? Genesis 2, May. Two, uh, 18. 2, 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help him with the it wasn't good for Jeff to be alone. He needed a Tamika. He needed some help. Day Day needed some help. God knows Kenny needed some help. So Trajan was there. Thank God that Trajan is there to help Kenny. Uh, Darnell, what's your wife's name? Or, oh man, how can I forget that pretty name? My brother Darnell needed some help, Oracle. <laughs> so we thank God for you. Isn't the God said it wasn't good for man to be alone? So, so that's that's God. So if you are a single woman, Lachelle, uh, who else single here? Chaz, that single row, Chaz, Ray, Vicky, know this. That there's a man who's alone, and God said that that's not good. So in your prayer, your daily prayer, part of your daily declarations, you ought to be praying for your husband. I take it serious. Because I've made so many mistakes in my past, because I've had things collapse, and we'll talk about it, you don't have any control over people lying to God. He didn't lie to me, you lied to God. You stood here, God asked you some questions. We're going to go over it. I had no control over that. But because of the results, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm taking it serious. I'm reviewing. I'm praying. God, who is he? Where is he? You have the ability to have our paths crossed. Am I ready? When he comes, what is he coming with? Uh, give me favor, not just with my husband, with his family, his sisters, his mothers, co-workers, children, all of that before he even comes. I don't even know who he is. I've been saying it's Idris Elba, but God may say otherwise. I don't know where he's at. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm already preparing myself before he gets here. I pray every day. And now I'm saying, God, you know what? That's not good. That's not you. If he's single, he's alone, and you said that's not good. It's not good for man to be alone. Now, if he's single, he alone, he living in his mama's basement, he unemployed, God still said it's not good for man to be alone, but that's not good for me. That's not, it's not good for you to be alone, home, unemployed, Single, but that's not good for me. Get it worked out. So men, you know, when men come here, uh, D D Davion is, is single. I had a little scared yesterday, but Davion is single. Uh, he's going to school. He works. Trust me, you know, you, you got to work if you're in my household. I'm about to get some goldfish. And the reason why I ain't got them yet, because I don't know if they employed yet. The fish got to have a job. <laughs> Don't we just come up here eating fish food without no job? No, that's the plan. Uh, so I'm serious about that. But is he prepared to take on that responsibility and provide for somebody? You can't take somebody on and she look good. That's the one I want. We're going to make music together. But until we get this album out, we're going to live in your basement. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Listen. So there's some things, man, you need to do. It's not good that you're alone. So you need to say, why am I still alone? What do I need to do? Women, you just need to work, wait on you, wait on him to, to, to work it out and to find you. But know that you have the power of prayer. And you have to be positive. I thank God for Sunday's message because sometimes we just get caught up in a negativity struggle. We, we just automatically.
automatically think negative, if we just talk negative, we just hang around negative people, everything is, if somebody compliments you, you come back with something, oh, you know, girl, this ain't nothing. Yes, it is something. You look beautiful today. Oh, you know, I just threw something together. Stop. We need to stop all that. You know, I got on my Sunday school class. I asked them, no, I can't do that. Well, I don't know. So we got to stop that atmosphere because when Betty prays, when people come in here, there needs to be a creative atmosphere. There needs to be a glorious atmosphere. I want God to reign. I want him to hear my voice. Look, hey, whatever Essence did that got your attention, God, show me. <laughs> whatever it is. So I can't be a foreign listening to people that are negative, and we do it just without even thinking about it. We just do it haphazardly. We just say whatever it is, thinking that's being humble. No, that's being retarded, and that's not of God. So thank God for the word of God talking about being positive. And most of negative people don't have a prayer life. You can't be in the presence of God and remain negative. I promise you. I promise you can't do that. And if something, whatever, and I'm not saying stuff ain't going to happen. I'm going to get there. I ain't saying stuff ain't going to happen, but you take that to God. You don't take that to people. You take it to God. I promise you, come here. And I came here, and I was like, okay, well, what's going on with the lights? But I came here with all the stuff. I mean, I'm human, and I ain't walking in 24-hour Holy Ghost, but I know where to go. I don't run to people. I didn't call nobody. I just came here and I said, look, God, I got to be honest with you. This and this, this is hurtful. This is disappointing. I'm trying to fight my way through this. I feel myself being, you know, uh, uh, scarce where I would just openly be. I feel myself like, God, I, I see that that's me. That's out of character. My point being, it's not that I'm not doing those things, my Nick. It's not that I don't feel those things, but I'm taking it to God. And by the end of that conversation, because of who I was talking to, now if I'd have been talking to, to Cynthia, who has a beautiful spirit, she can't do nothing for me. All I'm doing now is telling her all my negativity to mix in with all she got going on. And now we both sitting up here messed up and depressed. And ain't neither one of us went to God. So all we can do is share stories. And you ever go to somebody, Eric, and be like, girl, I ain't got no money. You, girl, I ain't got no money. I ain't had no You'll be like, well, dang. Neither one of us got no money? We got to stop that. I can go to God and be like, you know, when I don't have no money, he's like, oh, God, I'm glad you came to me because let me remind you of being a provider that I am. And when you are in the presence of God, when you're talking to him, he's the only one that can change it. And he did. Gave me some revelation. Gave me some word. Had to spend some time in the spirit. Had to remind myself of his word. I had to do that. Sunday, I had to do that. I said, wait a minute. That's me. Allowing people to ruin my day. Allowing people what they said. It's like, come on now. Not that I can do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. So why should it ruin what God is doing for me, what God is trying to do through me. Why should it stop that? It's not. It would have if I didn't spend some time in his presence. So your positivity is going to come from being in prayer. Talking about it, talking to people, ain't always going to change it. Now, I can go to Erica, maybe not Erica, but maybe I can go to Betty and be like, girl, you know, I ain't... I ain't got no money. And she might say, oh, well, girl, I got you. Okay, well, that's only going to happen a few times. As rich as Betty is, it's only a few times she's going to be like, you know what, now you, you, every time I see you, every Sunday you ain't got it. And she may have a stack of money and be like, I ain't got it. Because at some point you depended on me to supply your, to provide for you, and I can't continue to do that. At some point, you're going to have to trust God. There's nothing wrong with helping people. I've been a blessing. People have been a blessing to me. God will use people. But at some point, you're going to have to trust God. You're going to have to stand on his word. You're going to have to remind yourself of what he's already done. That's our problem. It ain't like he ain't never done it. But we're so busy focused on what, what, well, God, this, I don't have this. And, and you know, and this ain't going right. We're like, wait a minute. Ain't nothing new. I'm the same God. This is helping me. And this ain't even what I came to talk about. We're going to get married. But I have to remind myself, wait a minute, God. I remember this time last year, 
When that bill came in the mail from Boston for $65,000 in my heart, I ain't never seen uh, digits and commas and that many zeros. I mean, I, 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 to go to school, you know, I was like, I don't even know, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Where do you even go to get that kind of money, you know? I know, you know, I'm struggling with getting a, a, a six thousand dollar loan. Sixty-five? That's a house. You know that. But somehow, some way, I had to because I'm like God. This don't make sense, Day Day. This, I mean, I, this is why I kept struggling with it. And thank God I have friends who have faith. I kept saying there is absolutely no way that Davion is gonna get into Berkeley. He auditioned in my living room online. He didn't go there. They didn't see him. They didn't see what we see on Sunday where he just killing it. He's in my living room in the hood. Online, on a little, little webcam. Auditioned and he got in. And now what's going to stop him is 65000 No, what was going to stop him is my faith, my lack of. That's what was going to stop it. Damien was worried about it. He making plans, you know, like, hey, I'm about to move in the ball or Boston, telling everybody. I'm sitting there like, yeah, okay, we we going. But, you know, I was like, what? What's, I had to say, wait a minute. That doesn't, it didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense that he got in. So why would it make sense that God was going to provide? Well, he made it a whole year in Boston. He made it a whole year. So when this year came... When he had registered and they sent the, you know, the bill again, and in fact they just sent it to the payer of tuition for Davion Bailey, I was like, uh, God, you got some mail. <laughs> God, you got mail. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't even open it for real. Then they sent another one. I was like, God, you, second notice. <laughs> And then it, it went up to Sunday, send an email in case you didn't get the mail, 67000 I'm like, okay, well, God, well, once again, God didn't just run out. God wasn't just the God of 2015. Thank you, Jesus. He was the same God of 2016 that he was in 2015. And just because Berkeley increased didn't mean God decreased or he just had just 60. No. No. He increased. If they want to increase, I'll increase. I want you to know, give me something that I can't do. Give me something that's too hard for me. Give me something. The point is, give it to me. Give it to me. You don't have to handle that. It ain't meant for you to handle it. I know you don't know what to do. You can't heal yourself. You can't provide for you. It's for me. Give it to me. And when you do that, you be like, hey. You got to do like your kids do. Be like, mom, I need. Mom, I want. Mom, be, and they don't have any worry in the world. You don't get around to it. The kid's birthday's tomorrow, and I thank God my baby's going to be 24. He, uh, that's my Ken Poo, the middle child. So he's like, well, you know, uh, I want to go to this concert. So I'm going to go to my mama. Mom, I want to go see Chris Bodie. He's going to be here on my birthday. I need tickets. I said, okay, <laughs> all right. He ain't been more worried. All he know, he ain't been, all he know is tomorrow, 7.30, he gonna be sitting at the Holland. <laughs> he gonna walk up in there. <laughs> Either he gonna have the tickets in his hands or they gonna be at will call somebody. Maybe they just gonna open the door. All I know is I told my mama I wanted to go to this concert because it's my birthday. I'm going. Now, just to show you how that thing trickled in the household because he had the faith to believe he going, it ain't Trey John's birthday tomorrow. But I guarantee you, Trey John is planning on going <laughs> to see Chris Bodie. Ain't been more had a birthday. Ain't been more. Don't even care. But it's like we connected it and, and we attached. And somehow, some way, I got two tickets to get them for Chris Bodie tomorrow. They like, duh, we knew that. <laughs> Why? Because we went to our mom. Now, thank God, they was just, you know, $65. But uh, that's $65. And I needed 65000 Come on now, man. Y'all coming to God. Y'all acting like God is weak and many. And man, some of this, I'm talking to me because I went to God about people. When people try to ruin it's like, how many times do we have to go over this, Linda? Your focus is on the wrong thing. 
I'm doing something. It's a process you're going to have to go through. Now, you can choose how you're going to go through. You can go through it aware of what everybody's saying, what everybody's doing, or you can go through like it don't even matter and just keep going through it. You can make it easier. You can make it hard. So I decided, you know what? My focus hasn't been on the right thing. I'm giving it to you. Let's go on to the next. So some things I need to, I study. I don't just give my kids home, my students homework. I study. I love to study. I love to read. I'm like, hey, I'm not getting enough word. Maybe I need to open my mind up to something new. So when I went <laughs> to get my Bible today, I said, I need a new Bible. I'm not teaching another class without a new Bible. Or the page Genesis is over there, you know, right next to Revelation and Chronicles is <laughs> mixed in with Psalms and <laughs> yoking up Proverbs and it's got Ecclesiastes. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I need a Bible <laughs> that when Bishop Todd, when Bishop say turn to this, I can turn to it. So I said, I'm going in there. It's raining. I left work. I'm going in. I'm not even going to go to parables because I know parables. I know they out. I know where this book is, that book. I'm not even going there. I'm going to Divine Truth. I'm going to Papillion. I'm going in to just to get a Bible. And I walked in. I said, I'm just getting a Bible. Don't even look, Linda. Don't even look up. Where the Bible's at? Where the Bibles? King James. I'm just getting the Bible. That's it. Focus. Just getting the Bible. I got a Bible. I said, okay. No, no, I don't have that. I don't want that. It's a lot of different kind of Bibles, but Linda, don't look up. I'm just like, this is the Bible. I know me. I have an addiction. Nope. Get a Bible. So I'm looking, and I open them all up, and I certain scriptures I go to, what they offer, and it's a study Bible. Now, I need a Bible for church. I got study Bibles. So okay. Found something I like. I didn't even look at how much it costs. It don't matter. I need to invest in some word. <laughs> You need to invest. Yeah, you can go to Walmart and go to Dollar Tree and get you a five, ten dollar Bible. You need to invest in some word. So I made sure it was what I needed, and they have tons. And then I was like, oh, okay, bam. Forty nine ninety nine. Cool. Let's go. Turn around, Maylee. <laughs> bam. I was like, oh. That's Hebrew and Greek. Okay. Oh, okay. Just get this one book. It's staring right at you. That's God. Because you turned around. Bam. It was right there. So that's just one book. So I had my purse. I put it down. I open it up. Read the fort. Oh, this is good. Yep. This is something I'm dealing with. I need to get that. So as I <laughs> grab the book, I'm looking down. Oh, man. I've been wanting that book. I know God. Now that got to be you because you know I've been wanting that book. I turned around, saw this book. I went down to grab my purse, and there's another man. I walked out of there with eight books, y'all. I was like, oh my God. I came out of there with two bags, eight books later. <laughs> Damien, I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you very much been studying, ain't you? I'm like, come on, man. I got to do better. <laughs> That's me, but I, that got my mind. Thank God I had the money. That got my mind off of, I was hungry. I was like, I need something to feed myself because I have been going through a drought. Sometimes when you take teaching and working with people and you're the one that's always giving, you get drained, Lashar, and I had reached a drought. I had to get some more in me. I had to get some more work. I said, look, you got to take some time out to, you know, you can't keep teaching and teaching and teaching and doing and going and, and expect, you know, to keep giving something you don't have. I had to get some more in me. That's just my drug of choice is books. And I know some of y'all like, oh, that right. Got a Bible and left. That's what I needed. But that was after I came and God had to say, give it to me. You need to redirect your attention. Because I was thinking too much about what was hurting me. I was trying. And I'm not, I'm not no punk in this. I'm not new. This ain't the first time. But this one was really like, man, come on. The enemy trying to come through. The man of God's family like, man, this is, this is hitting home. This, come on. Here we go again with another. I was trying to shake it off, Mary, but I knew enough to know you're out of character. You're not the Linda you used to be. You're not as quick to, hey, how you doing? Like, you, you being careful. 
I know me. And it wasn't, and I didn't do anything, you know, cool, wasn't tripping with anybody, but I knew I was getting to the point where I was being cautious, and that convicted me. That convicted me. This, uh, you know, spoke to everybody, loved it, but I knew cautiousness was rising up in me. And some of y'all can't relate because you bypassed cautiousness and went straight to funkiness and I'm speaking, shut down and, and cut everybody out. But I'm saying cautiousness convicted me. I thank God that even cautiousness convicted me where I said, wait a minute, let me run, God. You got to help me with this. You need some more word. You've been talking to people, and sometimes I don't talk to anybody. That's not always good, so I'm not saying cut everybody off. Sometimes wise counsel, being in the community of people who pray, if you got a word and you're praying, and yeah, well, you might have a word, you might have some strength, but I knew <clears throat> sometimes I alienate myself. I'm being careful. Well, I wasn't getting anything, so... I'm going to go home and study some books. So we ain't going to be long because I got some books to read. I get excited about that. So I said all that to say, don't be treating God like he can't handle it. You got to take that immediately when caution, when you first feel it come up, don't let that thing fester. There's no reason to letting it fester. You got to take that thing to God. And anytime you're in the presence of God, the prayer, there's positivity that come after that. I've never left the altar. I've never left God's presence feeling funky. I've never left there ready to say, yep, okay, thank you, God, for giving me what to tell him. I'm about to go find him now. No, it's never been that way. And if you get that stay there because <laughs> he was talking to you be like what they did what what do I want to say yeah I'm gonna say that let me call him right now you want me to text him God ain't never told me to if it is apologize text him apologize yeah go back immediately do that this is where that's coming from that's past hurts that has nothing to do with them and a lot of time it is. And that's why God who knows all things will start bringing that stuff out. And if you're honest enough and stay there long enough to let him do that, layers will come off and you will feel like, God, I thank you, Lord. That's what it was. You're right. That's why it's bothering me so much. Because I've built up such a wall trying to defend myself that I can't keep going to you with that wall built up. You can't come to God like that. I am the Lord thy God. You better come to me boldly. You better come to me as a child. You better come to me broken hearted with a contrite spirit. You can't come to me with that. You can't come to me like I don't know what's going on. You better come broken. We come sometimes telling God what we're going to do. Telling God what it is. Telling God what he ain't done. Telling God, well, you know, God, uh, uh, I came to church with a raggedy car, too. I mean, I'm happy for essence and everything, but, you know, I was cute that day, too. <laughs> I walked around three times for offering. Then he had nothing. You didn't see me. I've been getting up praying. I've been giving. I've been here longer than her. I've been giving more than she's ever given. I know it's true. What, what? God's like, no, I don't care. And that's what I love about God, Essence. I don't care where, where Essence at. Where's she at? I, thought so. I don't care how long you've been here, how much you give. God said, mm -mm, nope, not today. July 10th is Essence Day. And I'm going to show everybody. And the look on your face is so priceless. Man, you was, <laughs> you was like, you got to be kidding me. You mean like for real, like a for real car? Like don't be, don't be playing. Now it would been different if somebody that couldn't do it was like, you know what, Essence, I see you. I'm going to bless you. God going to do it. Like you ain't got your stuff together. <laughs> you got to ride to church. <laughs> Tina, why are you going? But it was somebody that was like, oh no, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it today. They was like, let's go. The place ain't even open. Like, okay, we're going to come back. Right. It's open now. It's 1159. Let's go. Let's go. I was like, man, God was like, watch this. Watch this. Not that he ain't heard everybody else's prayer, but I want them to see. Watch this. That to some was like, man, well, come on, what do I got to do? Sit in the third row. But to some, it was like, God, thank you. It ain't that you forgot about me. You want to show me how you can bless me in the midst of everybody when all I do is just keep showing up, being faithful.
faithful. Didn't I, I mean, you stand up here, essence, with such a glow and such a joy. It's just, it's, it's a beauty to watch. And God said, I can't keep watching that. That's for somebody else because we get weary. We think, well, shoot, I've been standing up there with a glow. <laughs> You know, in the beginning, he was like, I am a millionaire. I'm the head. I'm singing and dancing. I'm beating my drum. I'm an asset to the kingdom. I'm an asset to the kingdom. I'm beating my drum. I'm the head. I am not the tail. I'm above only. But today, Lord, I came up in here beneath <laughs> We get weird. And God said, he may have done that to somebody who was just on the brink of getting weary. Just on the brink of, man, God, I'm going to make it here. I'm doing this. I'm pouring out all that I have. Do you hear me? Do you see me? God said, watch this. Now, you would think, well, God, if I'm the one that's praying, <laughs> no, God, you didn't hear me. I said, do you see me? <laughs> Do you hear me? <laughs> Not essence. Did y'all talking about me? Did you get it? God said, watch this. Watch what I do for somebody who don't even expect. It may not even been praying like you've been praying. I don't know. I'm just saying. My point is doing for somebody, for people who have the right spirits like God, you ain't. I, I see you. I see what you can do. Because we don't think stuff like that happen. I'm in a car pay for it. You know, we go get cars. We sitting there while they're running the numbers. We, we praying and rocking and you know you looking back there you see them talking to the manager and they don't know why they go behind I wish KT was here don't be going back there just say no you know you know already pull the numbers and they be like uh well let me let me talk to the the finance manager you be like well uh and then they sitting back there and they rocking you be like you wait I may have you there all oh, then they come out for you would you like a coat no I want the keys to the car I don't need nothing to drink <laughs> You sitting there just, Lord, Honda Shabbat, God do it. I know. You know all the scriptures. I know you're able to do it. Lord, bless me. I'm trusting. Won't you write? Won't you do it? Now, can you do it? Can you make the payments? Can you do it? God said, this one, watch this. God was like, watch this, watch this. Watch this, heaven. Watch what I do. She gonna get the title, and I'm like, she got the bishop says she got the title. I said, most places, even if you pay for the, they don't even have the title there. I mean, it take a little minute, cause they know it's gonna take you a whole bunch of minutes to get your, to come up with your stuff. So I ain't no need them. They don't even having the title. I'm like, she she got the title. No payment, cause see then what the enemy would do be like, yeah, they bless you with a car, they co-sign. But now, how you gonna pay for it? The blessing of the Lord make it rich and add it no what? Ain't no sorrow with that one, Essence. Ain't no sorrow with that one, Essence. I'm all off. Single woman, did you write it down? It's not good. It's not good, God. He's alone. It's not good. Let's make the vow before you make the vow. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. In the sight of God, somebody got excited. I wish Davion, I don't have time, but Davion been writing Karen's wedding song. <laughs> no, don't do it, Davion, don't do it. She practiced coming down the aisle. She trusting and believing God, and why wouldn't God do it? She got Davion, I want this song, I want it just like that. Oh, come on, she ain't the only one. Y'all been looking at, oh, that dress is cute. I want Coco to sing this. I want Dana to sing that. I want everybody standing on that, come rocking to the left, rocking to the right. You got it all mapped out. You know, and if you like Trey John, oh my Lord Jesus. She had two beautiful weddings. I like Trey John. You can't redo what you did the first time. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I was a virgin when I walked down the aisle. I, and I'm like, you right, Trey John. You, and she did it. She was a beautiful bride. It was fun. Rightfully so. So, but you got it all trained out. You're like, oh, that dress is cute. You going to order the bridal fairs, you bridal magazine. You know who's going to do your makeup. You know how you're going to have your hair. But do you know the vow? Have you studied the vow? Have you studied the vow? What you going to say? And have you made the vow before the vow? We talked about that. Did you make the vow before the vow? So, you know, we, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. You know, I've taken piano lessons. I learned the wedding song. That's the only song I know how to play on the piano. 
<laughs> Shut up, daddy. It's a holy matrimony. We gather here today, it's a holy matrimony. An honorable state instituted by God because it signifies the relationship Christ has with his church. You need to know that. So the vow you make in it is supposed to signify this the marriage, the exchanging of the vows, the, I mean, the, you can have all the flowers, you have a dead dandelion, don't matter. But you standing here, you standing here saying, God, what I'm about to enter into is going to represent how you feel about the church. Now, you can do that easily and he fine and I'm horny and, and all that stuff but do you really know how God feel about the church because even in your singleness that should encourage you like you can't keep me in this situation too long because I know how you feel about the church and I know that it's not good for men to be alone and I know that me being signal, single is not going to give you the glory like two of us together because we can have church at any time, but I understand who you are <clears throat> to the church, your relationship with the church. Now I have a greater understanding of my relationship with my husband. Because God asks you some questions. When you come here, he asks you some questions. Do you, Karen, take this? She's like, yeah, girl, I do. I sure do. <laughs> She's Karen. Will you have this man, Karen? Look at it, just the cheese. See, and that's the thing. That's what I'm talking about. She cheesing and everything just all sweaty and she all tingly inside. Ain't heard nothing. God's talking to you, Karen. That's why I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> let me try, let me try Chazerae. <laughs> Breathe, Karen. <laughs> she look at Karen. She's like, eh. Chazerae, got some things I want to ask you. <laughs> Will you have this man as thy wedded husband? That's the first question. You be like, oh, hurry up, girl, hurry up, get to the rest. Mm -mm. Will you have him? Because this signifies my relationship with the church. So you need to know what was God's relationship to the church? What was his relationship with me and my singleness? And can I duplicate that with another human being? Get First Peter real quick. Real quick, real quick, real quick. First Peter... Yeah. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? For, read two and nine, May. Read, read nine. I don't have them. I know it, but two. So ye are chosen generation. A royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that he should show forth the grandeur of, of him who had called you out of the darkness into his marvelous Chazare, you were chosen. You were chosen before he asked you to take on his last name. So when you enter into that union, you enter in there as a chosen woman. I've already been chosen. This is just the earthly choosing. Why wouldn't you choose me? Every single woman should be walking around like, why wouldn't you choose me? That'll keep from anything rolling up on you. Well, you know that you've chosen. Chosen nation, anything can't just walk up on something chosen. Now, if you just desperate, anything and everything goes to desperate people, but not chosen. So, Chazare, will you have them as thy wedded husband? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate. In the holy estate. The marriage is, and I told it before, it's a holy estate. Not a holy mama's basement. It's a holy estate. You should have some property. You got to live together. Now, if he chooses to leave, remember, this is God asking. This, he's asking these questions even before you exchange your vows to each other. And I know, because like Karen, you all excited, and everybody's like, oh my God, that dress is so beautiful. And, you know, Coco the song, and Day Day is pretty, and everybody's just, you know, Tracy and hooked up the church, and this, everything is just the way you want it, and you ain't heard nothing. You're not thinking. So you got to research this before. And some married people be like, I didn't even know I said all that. Whew. 
you got to research this before you get the butterfly. Before he tell you, you cute, you fine, uh, let's collect data. You got to know, wait a minute, are you sure? Because I'm already chosen. I already have this set up. I'm already expecting this because this is the relationship that I expect God to have with his church. I'm already in a relationship. Is God willing to share me with you? Are you sure? You ought to carry yourself like, you know what God is? is it, I, somebody approached me then I got a phone call from Paris. I knew when stuff goes on in the world, I get a phone call like, are you okay? I'm like, all right. I didn't answer it. Um, mainly because my phone died and I got a new phone and I ain't figured it out. But I'm already in a relationship. I carry myself where, God, are you sure? Are you, do you want to share me with him? Are you willing? Am I the one? This is not had nothing to do. This is before we even get to that point. You know what? Who, who is this that's trying to enter in? Because I've already made that mistake before. I already know what it's like to be excited about anything and everything that comes up to you and that says in Jesus' name that wants to give you their life. I don't want everybody's last name. And it don't feel good to take on somebody's last name and then have to hurry up and give it back. Right. It's, it's, I don't want God. I, first of all, let me let me take on God's name. Let me understand the relationship I'm currently in. And a lot of us is expecting to be married, not even understanding the relationship you in now. You chosen. You chosen. I'm already in a relationship. Let me get as much knowledge about my God before I can enter into a holy matrimony with man. Amen? Are we, is that clear? Now, married people, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, make it work. Work it out. <laughs> Just like, what? What? <laughs> Coco, like, dude, 10 years late. What are you, you didn't tell me this. No, I'm just playing with you. But I want for my single women to be encouraged because some people are going to get married. It's going to happen. I don't care how many marriages fail. I don't care what happened the first time, second time, how many mistakes. You have an opportunity to grow from it. Again, we're not going to be negative. We're taking that to God. I had to str I used to struggle. People used to beat me up. People <laughs> used to make me feel bad. And I thank God for the word Sunday because people used to, I used to allow people, let me say it that way, I used to allow people to make me feel bad because of the mistakes I made. And then I had to study and say, wait a minute, let me own what I, could, what I need to own. But let me get healed from, from people because you don't have no control over the will of another person. And it's some stuff that people are staying in that I choose not to stay in. Now, if you want to choose with that type of person, that's, that's you. Mm -mm. I'm not going to be mistreated. I'm not going to have my kids mistreated. It's, it's just some things that just are not going to happen. Because you can't control people. But I thank God that I had a relationship with him first before I entered into it. So it's like, okay, God, well, I ain't single. It's still me and you. My relationship with you still stands. The one with me, whatever. I ain't going into details. Half of y'all know, but don't matter. It's like my relationship with you still stand. It's still good. Thank God I'm still fresh produce. Let me get some more training. Let me get some more understanding. Let me, get, let me stay focused. Let me keep going. Not bitterness. Not people. Because everybody has an opinion. And you don't know. There's some married people here. But you don't know there's people that have been widowed. You, you just don't know. So be sensitive when somebody is going through that. Because you don't know. Your spouse may wake up and decide they don't want to be with you. Or they want to be with somebody else. You just don't know. So I thank God for the married women who are sensitive. Like, you know what, sis? I'm praying for you. It's some married people that didn't plan on being single. Nobody gets married to be single. There's some married. So you, be, before you have an opinion about somebody's marriage falling apart, before you have an opinion, before you want to pastor individually, and that's real talk. We, we quick to, to say, you know, I, mm -mm, I had somebody say, I, mm -mm, I, ain't, I ain't never going to get divorced. Okay, well, you can stay in that relationship and get beat down. You can stay in that relationship. I don't, mm, I don't want that on my record. You think I wanted it on my record? I'd rather my, but my record with God is good. I'm not going to have my kids mistreated. If you want to talk about record, let's bring up my record. <laughs> let's bring up my record. 
let's bring it up. Mm-mm, be careful about that. But so so but but now that I understand, I'm not giving up. It's still not good for man to be alone. I'm not giving up on love, and I didn't always feel that way. Nobody want to keep going through that, May Lee. You just be like, come on now. But you know, okay, you know this. All right, God. For real. I don't want to go through that. It's a headache. It's like, no, you're looking at it wrong. You had to. You have to study what I meant, what the purpose of it is. Shame on you for not making a vow before you made the vow and not knowing what you were entering into. Shame on you for not taking it serious and not being careful and calm and, and, and going before God. And, and, and when things happen, I, trust me, I'm not the person I was before that happened. I guarantee you I wasn't up here like I was before that happened. Now, I would have chose a different test I would have chose a different test you could have got a testimony God I would have chose a different way but God knew what he was doing he knew he is not an unjust God but I have to make sure that bitterness doesn't creep inside of me that I'm just forgetting God you can't do it for me and God that's embarrassing and God people are looking at me and, and people that rejoice with me if they still for you they still gonna rejoice with you they still going to rejoice with you. It ain't, there ain't no time period that, oh, you got to be a, a single for three years before somebody, before you can remarry. No, you know, God can do that essence thing, that July 10th thing, where somebody that's been waiting longer than you, somebody that's been praying harder than you, somebody that ain't ple- uh, planted seeds bigger than yours, and God said, watch this, watch, watch, watch what I do. And then people be like, okay, but now they on their fourth marriage and I ain't got my, that ain't your, hey, that's God's business. That's they. Talk to God about that one. I don't want God to think that I have to, there's no order. <laughs> okay, go to everybody in the first row. Okay, Cynthia, no, you got to wait, Deborah. We got to wait for Cynthia. Then after Cynthia get married, it's Deborah. And no, no, y'all married. Okay, Erica, no, you got to wait. For the Charlotte, Charlotte, a little older than you. She got kids. She need help with her kids. And then it come to you, you know. And then no, Charlotte, you gotta wait. Karen been here longer. God, God be like, watch this, watch this, watch this. July tenth, essence. Just like that. That ought to remind, you ought to remind. God don't have no order like that. Just when you put them in the box and think, okay, it's my turn. God be like, watch this, watch this. Bam. Just like that. Thank God that He ain't. Cause man, to have you be like, no, that's it for you. You're done. You're crazy. I, I have people put that on me, Vicky. I have people like, no, nah, okay, well, that's your limit. What? You're crazy. And I had, had me feeling bad. I'm like, what? No, uh-uh. I'm sorry your situation is the way it is. If God want to do it today, he going to do it right now in front of you. Just go watch. I'm like, hold on now. Ain't no limit. God's timing. But why he doing it? Let me find out what I'm doing. It. Let me find out what I'm let me, let me go through these questions. Okay. Well, thou love him. Well, you know, that's easy. Yeah, I love him. And you know that. Whew, that's my boo. Well, you know, we know the love scripture. Get, get first chronicles. I like going over these. We're like, girl, we get married. Do you love him? I love you. You love me? Shut up. Do you love God? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm don't say shut up. I mean, but do you, because he's gonna ask you, will thou have this wet care? I'm gonna try, come back to you. Why y'all getting First Chron- Corinthians, not Chronicles, First Corinthians? Will thou have this man as thy wedded husband to live together after God's ordinance and the holy estate? Will thou love him, comfort him, honor him, keep him in sickness? Some of y'all are like, what? Where was that at? He asked all that. Let's get love. Let's go back to love. First Corinthians 13. You may start reading. Tamika, you text me, girl. I got a new phone. I didn't know that was you. Okay. Uh, <sighs> love. Charity. Charity is love. Let's see. Yeah, start at... Um, yeah, start at one, because you know, it's some powerful anointed people in here that, you know, be prophesying and praying and doing a whole bunch of things, but don't even love. God likes, sit down. Sit on down. You, that don't mean nothing to me, and I, I like that about God. Go ahead. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass 
or a tinkling cymbal. You just making noise. You just making noise, speaking in tongues and doing all that stuff. You don't have no love. You just making noise. Go ahead. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. <laughs> Charity suffered long. Hold, hold on now. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Okay, so I can't prophesy. I can't speak in tongue. But you, nothing. But you, you, you telling me that I gotta have love? This love thing ain't ain't easy. Without love, him, will you suffer long with him? Somebody said, mm. Tina, do you say? Mm? <laughs> will you? Uh, ain't no telling how that thing gonna end out when he. Get a job, and it's, it's good for Kenny and Trey right now, but thank, thank God he's up for promotion and things are happening. But when that season comes of testing, can you remember how happy you were when you posted about his promotion? When now God says, you know, you got to up and, and I need you guys in Dubai. And ain't no Walmart. It's probably a Walmart in Dubai, but ain't no Walmart in Dubai. Now you got to make it happen. And then you're there for a long time. You love him now because you're going to see Chris Bodie tomorrow because it's his birthday. <laughs> but love suffers long. It's a long time. Somebody like, how long is long? Keep reading. Charity suffered long and is kind. While you suffering long, you got to be kind. Michelle can say that because she's single. Be like, <laughs> You, I gotta suffer long and be kind. She, she, she's smiling now. She's like, I know it's gonna be this long. How long I gotta be kind? <laughs> this is love. Come on, because you, because Karen, we asked you, will you love him? And look, she's smiling. She's like, I love him. Yeah, I do. I do. When you, I love him. I'm willing to suffer long with him, and I'm gonna continue to be kind. What else, Maylee? Charity envieth not. I ain't mad at everybody else who they marriages look like they just prospering and, and her husband got her a new car and, and my husband we still in this same raggedy car and her husband went and got a new house and we still in this two bedroom and hmm that ain't love that ain't love if it's somebody else's season don't be envious don't be envious. Love don't envy. Envy love is like, you know what, babe? That's all right. We gonna make we we gonna make the Francis house work. No, I'm not playing. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Get some counseling, cause I don't know the conditions and why y'all got there. I'm just saying stuff happened. I'm not I'm not pastoring nobody to advise anybody to be like, babe, I'm gonna be kind to you. You know, Tracy serves Bo. I mean, I'm not saying she's gonna go to the Francis house and serve you soup. That, y'all, that's different. And Tracy would do it. And that's just the kind, Tracy would do that. Be like, you got us in the Francis house. Talking about, baby, make my plate. Get in line with the rest of them. <laughs> you better get up here and get in line with the rest of them. Mainly, what else is love? I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> charity vaunted not itself. What, Charity, what? Oh. Mm. It is not. Puffed up. It ain't Sean Puffy Combs. Go ahead. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Mm. Seeketh not her own. So, so love don't be acting ignorant. Mm. <laughs> Vaughn Tracy, look now, not tonight, Bishop. Y'all wait till Bishop come back. He like, mm. <laughs> y'all be killing me. Love ain't acting e ignorant. Love ain't saying the first thing coming to the mouth and then hata shababa. That ain't love. Love is apologetic. Cause you said, Karen, would thou love him? 
Karen, like this list is kind of long. I don't know. I didn't know it was all this. But you want to be married. You got your dress picked out. No, I, maybe I got your song written. <laughs> she like this. This list is kind of long. There's a lot to go with this love. That's just one question that God is asking you. You already taking him. Y'all living together. It's a holy estate. So y'all got some promise in the state. <sighs> you love him. Now, what, what else is love? You're like, whew. Is not easily provoked. Okay, well, that's stop. Now, yeah, stop right there. Let's stop. We, we done right now. Now, you know, you it's some easily, it's all easily provoked people. Raise your hand. We can get delivered, but go ahead. Now, <laughs> oh, dang, why well, all the married people? <laughs> That ain't love, y'all. <laughs> Raise your hand again. Oh, Lord. Bo and Tracy. Bo shaking his head. <laughs> Easily provoked. That ain't love. Karen, what about love him? He fine. He got his hair freshly cut. Coco done sung the song. They, they, you know, they, they just sung the song right. Tracy got a hooked up, got beautiful flowers. Everybody crying. They happy. Will you love him? Are you going to be easily provoked? Because I guarantee you Satan going to do some things to provoke you in marriage. Any marriage? Kitty walked out. What's going on? <laughs> parking lot duty. Okay, shoot. <laughs> the check, sometimes you be like, I didn't know all that. Hold on, I didn't know all that. He gonna do some things that's gonna provoke you. Spouses, husbands, wives, husbands do things to provoke you. Uh, and Gabby, <laughs> you can't be easily provoked. It had nothing to do with it. This vow, it had nothing to do with He can't easily provoke you. Charity, love, <laughs> y'all, y'all, man, let's let's talk about Daniel and the lion's den or something because y'all scare me, y'all. <laughs> Jeff, he just walking beauty. You can't be easily provoked. As fine as she is, the bad. I mean, one of the baddest chicks up in here. I mean, anointed and bad, and she nasty. I don't know where she got that from. She's been talking to me too long. That's man. But that will provoke you. It, it, all that will provoke you. You can't be easily provoked. Karen, I'm coming to you again. Would I love him? You can't be easily provoked. Because when you go into this union, here's because what does this union signify? Signifies God's relationship with the church. God knows everything about you. He know all your hurts, your dreams, your aspirations, everything about you. Before I formed you, I knew thee. So when you get married, you get access to that person. I mean, they can lie, and people lie when they collect data. I got this, I got that, I'm about to do this. And you be like, okay, I mean, dang, all right. You standing up here, you love him, find out he ain't got no choice to stay. The car, he took you out on the date, was rented. He got to turn it back in right after the ceremony. <laughs> you like, you ain't got no money. <laughs> That's the problem. But I should have didn't check. I mean, like, do you have a title? You can say my sister got a title to her car. Do you have any titles to your car? I mean, you know. Now, don't say that if you walk in. I'm just saying don't jump bad if you walk in. But I'm just saying you, can, you have parameters. You've seen people get blessed here. You can expect that. Back to charity. Can't be easily provoked. And those who raise their hand, there's certain things that that person that's married to you know irritate you. I mean, you know, babe, we didn't talk about this all the time. Come on. I got to look at Sunday's dishes still in the sink. It's Tuesday. Come on, boo. You can't take the trash out. Little, you be like, but it's little things. It's little things that provoke you. The kids is lost in the grass. You can't cut it. <laughs> we can't even find we can't even find beauty come on
come on now. <laughs> she in the wilderness? <laughs> it's the little things. Come on, wise man. I've been at work all day. I'm hungry. Ain't nothing on the stove. You ain't got a peanut butter and jelly salad or nothing. You talking about you been praying all day. Come on. <laughs> man. <laughs> You was with the kids, you he come home, he want to play video games. You like, you can't watch the kids for five minutes while I take a break? Babe, I've been at work all day, I'm tired, you know. Uh, my job is to provide. You'd be like, you about to provoke me? <laughs> you, you know, I'm tired too, I've been taking care of kids. I work too. And you walking around looking for Pokemon. Man, you better, man, you better come on. <laughs> You're about to be provoked. <laughs> that might easily provoke you. J.L. come home, Brian, looking for Pokemon. Come on, B. <laughs> J.L. like Lord Jesus. <laughs> but you said you love him. You got. <laughs> I'm not saying how long you got to suffer this Pokemon phenomenon. I'm just saying. But you got to be kind. <laughs> I'm just saying, because you said, well, Karen, <laughs> will thou love him? That easily provoke. It don't say if you do this, this don't really bother me. No, they do what, what they know get to you. Everybody rolling their eyes. They like, Lord, Jesus. You sit next to Preston, I ain't even reading the Bible. Look up. <laughs> no, I just he like, Lord Jesus, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. <laughs> I just mess with them. They got a beautiful spirit. I love them. They so fun. I can't be easily provoked. Let's get past that. Come on, Maylee. What's next? No evil. Oh, come on now. <laughs> it didn't even say do evil. Read it again. <laughs> See, <laughs> Simona said we done. That's it. <laughs> That's, forget it. I'm good. Just, you know. <laughs> Don't even ask no more. What did it say, Maylee? Think, think, think it. No. <laughs> you can't even think it. <laughs> Not that Proverbs 31, lady. What did it say about being evil? Where is that reading, Mary? Keep it. Come, come, we don't come back to love, so, so say that, but let's go to Proverbs 31. There's something, something about that evil. <laughs> You can't even. Mm-mm. Because he's trusting you with his heart. 11. Let's read 11. 11 and 12. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Mm. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. There you go, ladies. Not evil. Let's go back to love. Karen, will thou love him? Love means thinketh no evil. Because, well, you could be like, well, come on now. This, I mean, I, mean, I ain't say it. I didn't do nothing. It was just the thought came to my mind. But what happens when that thought stays there for too long? What? You're going to end up saying it. It's going to go down to your heart, and then where is it going to come out? So, if you got a mouthy wife or a mouthy husband, I don't even know if that sound right, but <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe there are some. We cover everybody. A mouthy husband that says the first thing that comes to their mouth, you might want to check their thinking. You've been, you be like, you've been thinking evil for a while, ain't you? <laughs> You were thinking that for a long You know, come on now. You know when you sit, you come home, maybe you come home before they do, and you see something, you be like, oh, wait till they get here. You been think you just thinking about everything you gonna say. You got you perfecting it, you got that man, you like, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You in the mirror practicing, you couldn't do the dishes? <laughs> you like, nah, nah. Wow, you matter of fact, you standing out in the middle of the, of the grass. Like, do you see me? <laughs> you you practicing it. You thinking all about it. You like, yeah. Woo. 
I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, somebody try to call and God be like, he, he trying to like, you ever had something you just had to say? You just like, Lord, this thing was wrong. They got to know. And this is how you justify, you know, if I don't tell them, you know, you're supposed to go to the person you got to art with them. You know, you're supposed to go to them. <laughs> you know, let, I'm just, I'm just going to go to them because they don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go to them in love. I mean, I, Cynthia, I'm going to come to you in love because that's what the Bible said. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and God's like, mm-mm, no, you be like, no, God, mm-mm, no, 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 God, this one is, I got to say it. Okay, I ain't going to say nothing. But, if y'all, you know, some evil heifers in there, you ain't got to say nothing. You be like, hey, babe, how are you? <laughs> no, nope, fine. Bishop, I didn't say nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, how was your day work? It was good. But baby, what's, what's going on with you about to do? I'm, not, I'm about to just go outside, walk in the wilderness. <laughs> Some of the wild on grass. Somebody need to cut their grass. <laughs> I'm about to just go outside and pray <laughs> in the wilderness because <laughs> you ain't cut the grass. You find a way to get it out. You find a way to get it out because you easily provoke and you evil. And that ain't love. And then you come to church, you prophesy, speak in tongues, you got a word for everybody else. And God's like, man, sit down with all that. That don't do nothing for me. That don't do nothing for me. Are you kidding me? You thinking like, whoo, whoo, come on, y'all, we all got to do better with that. Because we ain't saying this. He's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. And here's your greatest victory when that thing burns. And it's some justifiable thing. How many times I got to tell you? <laughs> Whew, sorry, I had a moment to just do the little thing. I ain't even, at, man, this is just little thing. You be like, you know what? That's all right. I'll do it. And, you know, I got to just, whoo, that's all right. Mm-mm, that's okay. You do you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to do me. I got it. I, you know, I love you out there. Mm. <laughs> You know what? That's okay. That's okay. You know what? The Bible say don't say nothing. I ain't thinking evil. Just do it. Let me just go out here and pray. <laughs> Man, your greatest victory is when you be like, I'm not going to be easily provoked. <laughs> this is a little thing. Now, it, it takes another, I know, I know, I know. You're like, because it's the little things. I know. And if you got if you got this man and your singleness, we all been tested. So it ain't just for married people. Single people be like, okay, this is just a test. That's all right. Let me get myself together, Lord. You got to help me. I don't want to think because I'm thinking evil right now, Jesus. And sometimes it just you know you get some off. You just feel good. And maybe he don't know. Maybe he didn't hear me when I had asked him to do that. So let me let me change how I say it. Let me go. Let me go over the scripture. Let me go over our wedding video, cause you know. Let, let me review what I said. Karen, will you love him? What's, what's love? Let me do a study on love. You know. Let, let me put my paper on Moses aside and do love. Let me. I can't do. I can't do Samuel right now. Let me. Let me study this love thing out. What did I say? And every time you give that thing over, you will learn. Because I'm telling you, 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 not them. You can't be easily provoked. You got to understand. Say, no, this is something that's just going to get me worked up. It's going to roll over to something bigger. I'm just waiting for him to come in so I can let him know, so I can tell him. And maybe justify, you know, if, if you got the wilderness out there, if the grass is, is as tall as the house. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and that, that, that is unacceptable, man. Let me just put that as a sidebar. Come on, man. Cut the grass. Call Michael. Somebody, pay somebody to cut the grass if you don't know how to cut grass. But don't let Satan enter because the grass ain't cut. Because the dishes ain't done. And it takes that little bit. And we laughing because we all been like, you know what? It was something so stupid that just got me so upset, got me all worked up, got you frustrated. And Satan like, yeah, girl, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm like, no, I'm not going to let this come between us. I have to remind myself. And that's when you say, you know, if you, if you messed up, 
I don't know why I'm talking about this. Somebody, you owe your spouse an apology. That's not what I said when I made that vow before you. That heals some things when you review and say, you know what? <laughs> I didn't say it right. Yeah, you're supposed to take out the trash. Don't say that. But in your mind, you're thinking, I did ask you to take that out. The dishes have been there since you cooked Sunday night dinner. That don't matter. It's like, babe, I didn't have to say it that way. I heard a word tonight <laughs> that love is long, <laughs> it's kind, and I'm not going to be easily provoked. And I've been thinking some, no, don't tell them. I've been, I've been thinking some evil thoughts about you, babe. <laughs> but I'm going to repent. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. But you owe your spouse an apology because I'll guarantee you. So, so I don't say that. <laughs> like, don't tell Brenda that. I've been thinking evil. <laughs> Somebody is going to be kind. They're going to appear to suffer long just like you did. You was kind. You was sweet. You was hospitable. You was serving. Karen, I'm teasing Karen. She's sweet. Now your boo here, you don't sweep no more. <laughs> now you like, it's time for some other single woman to sweep. And, and now you just, he like, but, but babe, I remember watching you sweep. And I just remember... Look at her working on it. Why are you sweeping? You can just say, you know what, I'm going to be kind. I'm just going to practice being kind. I'm not going to be easily provoked. I know I done told her to stop bringing her kid with Cheerios. They all, but I'm not going to be easily provoked. I'm not going to be easily provoked. I'm just going to practice. You know what? <laughs> Sunday school teachers, children's church teacher, you give assignment, you get homework. I'm not going to be easily provoked. <laughs> If don't nobody do their paper, I'm not going to be easily provoked. They tested me, Lord. <laughs> they, I'm not going to be easy. I'm thinking evil thoughts towards my class. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just playing. I'm not. But you get a chance to practice. Review. My point being, review what you think you're ready to enter into. Review. What are you really saying? And we didn't get through all the questions. Let me quickly. I'm going to finish it. I'll finish up tomorrow. So that, you're right. So that, be here tomorrow, unless I get, let me check. I got a new phone. Maybe he texted me and told me he coming. Okay, no. Anyway, <laughs> I ain't thinking evil. I ain't going to be provoked. <laughs> Long-suffering, kind, because I love the house of God. I love the man of God. I love the people of God. And God has me some questions. Comfort him. Oh, no, let's finish love. Let's finish love. There's some more love. Y'all don't want y'all to think that y'all was done with evil, but y'all got to get past being evil. Any evil people here? Okay, you ain't the only one. Get past being evil. With my son, Kenny. I, yeah, okay. I know you raise your hand. The little thing. I, no, I'm just being real. Okay, go ahead. May Lee, keep, go back to, uh, I'm in Galatians. I don't even want to hear the rest of that. <laughs> what's, what's left? First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Go, go, go. Whatever, what is it? Read it again. Rejoicing not in iniquity. Come on now. Rejoicing in the truth. Bear its own thing. Rejoice in truth. When you hear truth, and tonight truth is being spoken, so rejoice. Don't think evil about me because I'm bringing truth. <laughs> now come on now. Sometimes when the word comes, I have people in my class be like, that was a hard word. Don't think like that. Rejoice when truth comes. Rejoice. Because it's practice. Because you're going to be standing up here, Karen. Going to be standing up here. Will thou love him? Will I rejoice when I hear the truth? Well, how is he going to tell me the truth? How many? It depends on how he say it. If he tell me the word and he say, babe, you can't go shopping today. We saving for a house. Rejoice in true. <laughs> Babe, we, we saving up. We got to go to Boston. We got to cut back. We got to handle some things. We got to take care of some business. Rejoice in truth. That goes for men and male and female. Keep going. What else? Are we done yet? Bear it all things. Oh, man. What? Bear it all things. Wow. Believe it all things. I got to bear all that? People come with a lot of stuff. They come with a lot of stuff. You got to bear it all. It's cool now. He just, he, when you met him, he was in the military. Are you out now? You out? 
You got a bear when he was in the military. You got a bear when he's out. You got a bear when ministry comes. Be like, well, you, you didn't tell me when I married you that you was coming to get out of the military. I only married you because you was in the military. I want to be a military wife. No, I'm not. And the bear all things. All things. There's some things that some people have had to bear and be kind and suffer long and not think evil. That's, that's a lot. And that's just one question that Bishop, on behalf of God, is asking you. Will you love them? Love is a lot. Bear with all things and what else, Maylee? Believe it all things. Oh, no, I know he's lying. I ain't about to believe this. I can't believe he done lost another job. Believe all things. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't pay another bill. I can't believe she took that money <laughs> and bought some clothes with it. I can't believe she done bought another pair of shoes and the lights is I can't believe I didn't came home and ain't nothing cooked. I can't believe believe it. <laughs> believe it and bear it. <laughs> they made a mistake. Uh, spouses make mistakes, guys. Men make mistakes. Women make mistakes. They make bad decisions. They make bad financial decisions. They make bad life decisions. Sometimes they say the wrong things. The key is to have somebody that reviews and repent. It makes it, it makes it easy to bear, but it don't say bear it if they repent. It don't say bear if they apologetic. It don't say bear. It just says bear all things. That's, that's, that's who you said you love. So you're going to have to bear some things. You're going to have to believe. You're going to have to believe in some things. So it's easy in your singleness to believe in God. So when you marry somebody, you got to believe in them. You got, I can't believe. <laughs> this grass still ain't cut. I can't believe. You got to believe it. Bear all things. Believe all things. Go ahead, Maylee. Hurry up because this love test is too much. We done here. Hope it's all things. Oh, I'm hoping. <laughs> endure it's all things. <sighs> Bear it. Endure. I mean, is there? Come on. We... We can't think evil. We got to bear, endure, and hope. Okay. Charity never faileth. Oh, man. Love never fails. With all those things, finish it out. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part... And we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Love is perfect. Love is perfect. God loved you with a perfect love. You endure all those things. And it's saying the reason why I don't care about you speaking in tongues. I don't care about your charity, your giving. If you don't love and if you can't practice love in your singleness when you get married, it's going to be that much harder <clears throat> the reason why it's that way is because it's perfect it's infinite you don't run out of love and I know people say uh, I don't have no more love to give that's a lie you don't run out of love love endures forever God loves you and it's forever and you have it in you to love you choose to run out of love you choose to only love a person so far you make love conditional and love is not and you can't take anything else before God. No, he said, none of that. I'm so serious about love. Because to prove to you how much I love you, I gave. There's a lot of giving that comes along with love. I gave. That's how much I loved you. To prove how much love means to me, I don't care about none of all those gifts. The gifts and callings are without repentance. I gave you those gifts. But love endures you have to practice love and once you and these things go over them and I'm gonna wrap it up we'll finish off tomorrow something we'll try something else because a lot of people got to get past like man I'm evil I, I, I get provoked easily I don't want to bear nothing I want it this way uh, 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 and I never considered what the vow I made single women the vow before the vow how are you treating God because his relationship, what marriage is, is supposed to symbolize the relationship between Christ and the church. And man, y'all, did God get us covered? 
he got all of those things covered. He's been a provider. He endured your funky attitude. He believed you when you said you was going to trust him. He loved you. He's kind. He's And he's been with you for a long time. I thank God. God's been dealing with Linda for a long time. He's endured. He's got to cover. He's been the perfect example. I am a without excuse. There is no limit on my love. Amen. There's no limit. We'll finish it off tomorrow. Every head bow. We got a lot to think about.